Hello everybody, welcome back. It is Road to Recovery for yet another porn story. And for those of you who may be unfamiliar with why I'm doing this, um, part of my channel is to aid and assist with the recovery from uh, habitual porn use or porn addiction. And part of that process is learning how to tell your story. So through these videos, I'm hoping that by hearing some of my embarrassing stories, you will feel empowered to find somebody who is close to you that you feel comfortable with sharing and tell some of your stories. Now, um, you know, it's been, I think we've done three videos so far in the story. And as I mentioned before, I have a lot of stories to tell. I have so many stories to tell that sometimes it's difficult for me to be able to pick which ones to tell. Um, so today this is gonna be dedicated more towards um, I had these habits. I had these habits of uh, storing back in the day before there were handheld devices, uh, storing my pornography into um, little areas. Like uh, sometimes it was three and a half disc, uh, three and a half inch floppy discs uh, back in the AOL days. I used to take my uh, floppy disks and uh, they were single density. And if you wanted to make them double density, the trick that most people didn't know back then is you could actually take a drill and drill a hole through the other side where the um, where the right protection was. And uh, when you drilled that, it would actually allow the uh, disk drive to write up to the other side of the magnetic floppy. And so you could actually make a single density, a double density drive. Um, so I figured that out and was taking these old AOL disks and just like bloating pornography into them all the time. Um, when the CDs became more affordable, recordable CDs, uh, I started pressing them onto CD format and I was constantly uh, making copies of them. So uh, you have to understand and put this in context. Uh, Newt Gingrich was the leader of the House of Representatives back then, way back then. And um, there was a lot of paranoia that there might be laws passed that would essentially restrict pornography on the internet. And it's kind of comical to even think about that, right? Um, but I, I had this I had this degree of paranoia about all the collecting I have done might be wiped out on the internet and I won't be able to access it again. So I used to uh, store all the porn I, fa I found onto like, you know, uh, drives of some sort, sometimes on my hard drive, but sometimes just, you know, uh, you know, uh, CDs. And um, so I, I did that for years, years. I had stacks of CDs just filled with porn. And um, I remember I moved to the location that I'm currently residing in right now. And I have this uh, person who is a, a family member and um, I married into this family. And the, one of the first things I did with this guy is um, my idea of showing affection to another man, even though I'm, you know, obviously heterosexual. Um, was giving them my boy like giving them a porn cd hey you want some porn and i would give them a copy of the of the porn that i had and that was my way of showing affection to another person and just thinking about that is the most messed up thing like um you know my idea of showing affection to another person was was giving them porn and uh so i did this and uh he was he was happy because he also was of the same age group so he remembers what it was like um downloading porn he had aol so like it was painful it would take you know a few minutes just to see a boob or something it was it was terrible back then on your old 56k modems um so you know at first he was thankful but then he uh you know my methodology for downloading porn was i used to go to news groups and i would just I would open up a news group. I think it was all binaries, pictures, erotica, and uh, you young people won't understand this, but that's what we had to go through back in the day. It was it was tedious. You had to assemble all these binaries together and then decode them so that you could actually see the picture or video that you were looking at. And I got lazy after a point, and I would just go to the the news groups and I would just download an entire series of stuff. And it would take sometimes hours to you know download it combine it together so that you can see the viewable image and then i would turn around and rip that to um you know a device of some sort oftentimes i i wasn't even looking at some of the stuff that i had downloaded um you know it was just just so much crap out there 
Um, so I would download it to these drives and I'd have these stacks and eventually sometimes I'd get around to like looking at a, but a vast majority of the time, you know, I would like look at one or two pictures, masturbate and be done with it. And, you know, a majority of other stuff I was like either skipping over or didn't know, but he looked through this one CD and, um, the CD I, I had ripped that that particular CD had a lot of interracial porn on it and he got on my case about it. I mean, you have to understand there was a, he was probably a little bit racist to begin with, but he was like, what the hell is it with you? And like, like looking at interracial porn. And I was like, well, what the hell is your problem with it? And so like, <laughs> so the discussion became not, Hey, why were you downloading so much porn? The discussion became, uh, what's your issue? Because he was, he was concerned. Cause like I was, um, you know, married to his sister. So it was my brother-in-law. And he was concerned that, you know, she married some sort of freak. And I was like, dude, just calm down. You know, it's just, it was one of the stack of CDs that I had. You know what? You might find some Asian people on some of these CDs. And it doesn't mean I have a thing for Asians. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, in reflection, I can sit here and laugh about it because it's, um, you're, you're making a deal about the content of the CD and not making the issue about how much porn was actually there. Like, you know, just think about how much porn, especially back then, that you could fill up on one CD. Uh, what is it, like 700 and something megabytes that you can get onto a CD. So it was like, I had stacks of these things, stacks of these things, right? Um, <laughs> and also thinking about, um, how we've evolved to where like literally those stacks of CDs, I could probably find the contents worth on just one Pornhub page, right? You know, just like just one, one, you know, search result. Um, it's comical to think about it. Like, you know, now the, the quantitative escalation of the amount of pornography on the internet is mind blowing, mind blowing. Um, so anyway, the end result of that story was that, uh, because my brother-in-law had a big mouth, he went off and started talking to other people. Yeah, he's really big into interracial porn. And like, I had to deal with like the embarrassment of him saying that shit when it actually wasn't really the case. Um, but you know, I had to fight him. I, I called him CNN later on in life cause he'd like to announce everything. Um, but at the same time, I owe that guy a great deal of gratitude because he went into Alcoholics Anonymous. His part is he was a drunk and he act, I mean, obviously by hearing the story, you would probably say he sounds like a drunk too. Um, he was a drunk and uh, it took him a really long time and the end of his marriage before uh, he got himself some help and got into AA. And it was through his work in AA and recovery effort that he helped me get into SLAA when I hit my rock bottom, which you can read about or hear, listen to about in one of my videos. Um, but my rock bottom event was really bad. It uh, led me to being suicidal. So um, it's through SLAA that I was able to uh, really sink my teeth into the recovery effort and understand how much work it is and how much I needed that. I, I needed to get past my own um, my own problems. And the problems were a lot. Obviously, I'm making these stories so you can hear about it uh, because I had a lot of issues. Um, but the, the primary issue at Focus was the um, my inability to recognize how bad my porn addiction actually was. And through that porn addiction, it caused lots of um, lots of destruction, lots of emotional uh, pain and suffering uh, as a result. So anyway, um, yet another story down. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, I'm hoping this will help you have more courageous conversations and give you the courage to actually speak about your problems. If you haven't done so already, um, find yourself a 12-step program and or go join a forum like NoFap. You know, find a recovery partner, um, have somebody that you feel comfortable with that you can talk openly and honestly about what addiction looks like for you. Uh, and by, by confronting these problems and by talking about them, it gives you more power over the addiction. 
Anyway, thank you for listening. Stay on that road to recovery.